Um, so this is part of our, uh, our TFPF week. If people don't know what that is, it's the Texas Filmmakers Production Fund, which is our grant program for Texas filmmakers. It's been going strong since 1996. And as part of that grant program, we bring in filmmakers from outside of the state to, uh, to make the final decisions about uh, who's going to get the money. Um, and uh, so is one of our three panelists. Um, and we always like to have them sort of share their work um, as the filmmakers of Texas are sharing their work with uh, the panel. Um, so that's why we do these, these screenings. Um, were any of the actors related? Um, no, no, none of the actors are related. And then two girls we found in Korea. We did casting by going to elementary schools and kindergartens and um, different places where kids that age hang out. <laughs> Was the story based on anything that uh, had occurred? I'm, I'm thinking of like nobody knows. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's that's um, great reference for me. It's kind of based on my experience of growing up in Korea when I was a kid, and um, nobody knows has like been one of my favorite films. And when I saw that film 2006 in Toronto, it really gave me a sense like, oh, I could. I could, maybe it's possible to um, tell the story. So. Yeah. We can come back to you. Go ahead. Did you feel the need to show something that is a common occurrence, did you say? Or, or a plight of single parents or a children in a situation? For more of an isolated. Yeah, well, I think what I wanted to do was something that um, is based on my own experience. So I wanted to remember some, some things that are specific to my childhood, but it's not exact like autobiographical to the events. But I think I wanted to take the perspective of the children's experience more than what the adults might say that the kids went through. So I think that was part of the challenge that I wanted to take on. So. Um, it, it seemed like the uh, camera placement was consistently very low and that the perspective of the film is almost from a child's point of view. And I was wondering if that was an intentional choice you made. Yeah, um, from the very beginning, that's the perspective that I wanted to take on. And um, the story, the, this um, script is written from that point of view. And I work with our DP, our fantastic DP, Emma Sawa. And um, one of the things that I requested her to do was the eye level of the camera has to be always on the kids um, eye level and we always did the close-ups first as a master shot so yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you talk about the title yeah Trillis Mountain actually I was just in Korea for the release in Korea and they were also asking me about the title and um, strangely enough when I first started writing the story, the title came to me first, and that was back in 2003, and um, my first film, In Between Days, I didn't have the title until two weeks before it went out to a film festival. So um, for this film, it, it started as Treeless Mountain, and it finished as Treeless Mountain. And I think, in a way, it was because when I was writing the story, it was always a question that I had, like, if two children are placed in a uh, location that's as bleak as Treeless Mountain sounds, like how would they overcome that? So hmm. that's, that's Yeah. Can you speak about the urban rural thing going on there where you start urban and go rural, where it's kind of the opposite of what's happened in Korea in the last <coughs> few decades? <coughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people in uh, Korea even ask me, like, where did you find that rice paddy farm in Korea? Because <laughs> it's really hard to find. Um, so the location where we shot is actually my old hometown. And 
and originally when I wrote the script, I was kind of wondering if I had to do a period piece because I wasn't really sure what the town would look like anymore. But when we went back to 2005, I thought it was pretty much the same as it used to. So that's why we shot it. And I think as far as the locations go, pretty much sets this very traditional three-act kind of structure for me, and I kind of used that to build the story when I wrote the story. So. Yep. Yeah. This is probably a big duh, but uh, uh, it struck me that the, the wonderful uh, uh, skyscape um, scenes that were punctuating, were they like chapters? And were we supposed to get an emotional kind of premonition out of those? It didn't occur to me until I saw that one with a great big black one, and you stayed on for a long time. It was like a big jaw coming down. Is it the one where the sun comes out at the very end? It just barely peeks above it. Yeah. Yeah, um, I really like this guy. and um, But kind of like Chapter of Grace, I guess, that could be one. Thing. But also, when I was editing, um, I was trying to use as much um, close up as I can because I love them personally. But it wasn't working at some point because of the rhythm of the story or emotional builds or whatever. So I was starting to put more wide shots of the landscapes or scenes. And, and then it just worked out that um, I had this feeling when I was in Korea shooting that I wanted to capture as much of the sky as possible. I really love them. They are constantly changing. And I think what I remember of the childhood in Korea, I used to watch the sky a lot as like passing time because my understanding as a kid of time is different than adults. And I think what I remember about time is <coughs> looking at the sky. So. Uh, I think that was one of the things that I wanted to capture as something that's particular to um, Korean landscape is the landscape of the sky. So anyway, so it, it all came back when I was editing. And um, that one shot at the end where the sky, uh, it's all the dark clouds and then the sun peeks out. It was a long debate between myself and my husband who was helping me edit. And, He's more of an optimist than he wanted this guy to open up to the sun coming out and I wanted it to be uh, full of the dark clouds. So that's the only thing that I remember. Mean. But yeah. Um so it, obviously you're trying to show the, the sort of anxiety of the kids, but when you're directing the children and you're having an isolated scene, is that what kind of direction do you give them? I mean, it was effective in that just the silence. They didn't have to say grief. You could just hold on them in a passive face or something. But was that hard to, to give them direction to pull off the intensity? Or what do you say to them? You know? What do I say to them? <laughs> That's a well. secret. <laughs> 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 um, the, yeah, well, the kids are non-actors, so um, what we spent the most amount of time in Korea doing was casting. So we spent about three months um, going from school to school to look for the right kids. But um, even before that, I had assistants in Korea who were visiting different um, kindergartens or orphanages, send me pictures of kids um, at a certain age and stuff. So. I was looking for these girls for a long time. And then um, before we started shooting, we didn't have any rehearsals, but I gave them basically some rules to follow, which were don't look into the camera. Uh, when I speak with you, don't look at me. Um, whatever I say, as far as the dialogue goes, just repeat it. And if I s tell you to repeat it again, say it again. Um, and then um, you know we'll start, and until I say cut, you can't leave the set. So <laughs> basically, we shot a lot of film, like a lot, a lot of footage. So. <laughs>